Welcome to the Cyrax Anthology series. In a collection of videos, I will be looking into and explaining the infamous locale, Chance Wilkins, in as much or as little detail as I deem fit. I'm going to focus on events that are particularly interesting to me, and might not necessarily go in chronological order. I'll try my best to give as much background as necessary, but some information on Cyrax is hard to come by so I will be relying on external sources such as the wiki to fill in the blanks. This series will be unlike my other videos, which focus on individual events narrated by a more informal reaction. I'm going to test out using an avatar for narration portions of this video, and would be interested in knowing if you like or dislike this format. This is my first attempt at a documentary style video, so it might be a little bit rough around the edges. But please, leave your critiques down below. I appreciate all your feedback. Today, we will be exploring Chance's early life and introduction to the internet. But first, I would like to discuss this video's sponsor, me. It sure ain't easy taking care of all these cows. You gotta milk them. You gotta rub her back. You gotta rub her feet. You gotta feed them. You gotta kiss on her. You gotta take them out to graze. You gotta, you gotta fill on her titties. And then at the end of the day, you've gotta deliver their milk. And then, and then you gotta lay it down. Being a humble milkman comes with a lot of responsibilities. Think about all the lonely wives you gotta satisfy, one milk bottle after the next. These others are getting drained. Ah! I need some help. That's where you come in. For just $5 a month, you can become an honorary milkman and help support the content you know and love. Let's take a look and see what lucky cows your membership will help provide support for. Mmm, he's green. Looks like good hygiene. Fun to party with. She, he, she could. How handsome. Wow. I sure feel safe around him. Wow. Ain't those gals just lovely? Why don't you consider supporting my content by joining the milkmen down below? Because these cows need a milkin. <laughs> Holy fuck! Stop being so fucking cringe and get back to the video! Cyrax, known as Chance Wilkins, was born Patrick Smith on the 24th of May, 1990, in Alaska. He was born to parents Connie Lobdell and Rupal Smith. Cyrax has an odd complexion to him, arguably his most recognizable trait. He lacks broad shoulders and has spine complications from birth, giving him a sort of quasi-moto hunch to his posture. It is assumed that Chance's mother, Connie, had been a heavy drinker that led to his disfigurement. Cyrax has also claimed that his mother had been somewhat intellectually disabled, which might have played a factor into Chance being taken away from his parents post Rupal's arrest. Chance's family has a history of being enthusiastic about children, to say the least, in more ways than one. His father was arrested in connection with Ping, a woman along a bike path in July of 1994. The only reason he was eventually acquitted of these charges was because of a Miranda rights violation, freeing him in 2008. He proceeded to change his name to Ongus Ravenwood and moved to a separate part of Alaska. Here are some of the facts of this case. At the crime scene, the police found shoe prints and bicycle tire tracks near the spot KS had been attacked. The police determined that the bicycle had different tires on the front and rear, both being very distinctive. 
Smith owned a blue 10-speed bicycle. Trooper Clark examined the tires and noticed the front and back tire treads differed from each other. Barnes stayed on the scene until around 3 p.m. He taped an additional short exchange between himself and Smith, in which Smith offered to get the clothes that he wore on the day of the crime. Smith indicated that he was very tired and wanted to get back to bed as soon as he could. At trial, a jury convicted Smith of kidnapping, sexual assault, and sexual abuse of a minor. The Court of Appeals remanded for the trial court to determine whether the introduction of Smith's confession was harmless error. On remand, the trial court found that the error was not harmless. Accordingly, the Court of Appeals reversed Smith's convictions. Since being released, Rupal has remained mostly quiet, popping up infrequently and having no contact with Chance, but most notably, he appeared on a Music Biz Marty stream to defend himself against accusations of an inappropriate Pinterest page. Angus. Yeah, about time you answered on this thing. If you weren't backstage here. Uh, I would not pass up an opportunity to speak with you. I've been on here. I've, I've tried uh, saying something to you three different times and it, nothing came through. You, um, what was your campaign for trans youth awareness? Because one of my co-workers, Austin, who is a trans male, was getting harassed at work and he wanted to help doing uh, transgender awareness. Okay. Um, it just seems like odd because it was strictly pictures of kids, like boys in dresses and saying uh, that they're easy as, to convince. Like, as, well, my ex, as my ex-wife Scarlett was telling you, as my ex-wife was telling you before... Those weren't the only images we used. Those were just some of the best pictures for what we were doing. Young, feminized soccer boys are easy to convince. But what are they easy to convince? Okay, and I see, like, what a wonderful dress for a cute boy, and there's, like, a 10-year-old boy's, like, head cut out and pasted over an adult woman's body. Like, it's kind of weird. That it, like, it, you know, it honestly made me feel, like, sick to my stomach. Maybe I'm getting the wrong idea here. Under the circumstance, under the circumstances of the way you guys are putting it out there, yeah, it would be inappropriate. But okay. you're you're misusing the what the purpose of what those pictures were used for. Okay, what are feminized soccer boys easily convinced of or convinced to? It, what did these pictures have to do with promoting mm -hmm. Austin's plight? Like, what does that end up? Developing? Austin, Austin asked me to help him to put together. <laughs> gender youth awareness thing for Alaska because Alaska has some of the strictest laws for gender. Hmm. <clears throat> um, I, I've been asked this a million times uh, and I don't know if this is off base or appropriate to ask but uh, can I ask what happened with Connie? Connie died in a house fire while I was in prison. Fair enough. Um can I ask, like, how, like, what your relationship's like with Chance? Like, does he know what you've done or, um, like, the details of it? Because I've heard him refer to you as his brother before. Chance, know, Chance knows all about my past. Okay, can I ask why you're the reason, the reason he refers to me as my br as his brother is because my mother adopted him when he was in the hospital as a baby. Well, that doesn't make a ton of sense considering Chance was born in 1990 and if Rupal was arrested in 1994 on suspicion of these charges, Chance would have been at least 4 years old and assuming he had no further health complications post leaving the hospital as a child, he wouldn't need to return there. It seems like this story's been a little bit muddled, and my hypothesis is that Sally probably told Chance that his actual biological father was an uncle or an older brother of his to sort of muddle and hide the fat that his true father was actually a monster. Please leave Aaron Morris out of this. 
My, he's already fired me over this because it's bad for his business. Even though I've had no issues in two years that I've worked for him, but it's now harder and hurting his business. What was his, uh, what was his, uh, reasons of, uh, letting you go? Because of this, the, uh, the comments you guys are, uh, plus the emails you sent and the Pinterest and everything else. It was the whole and combined thing. It does look pretty sinister, uh, with those comments on there. My son has no, no understanding of how to stop when he's told to stop. And I can have no control over that. He doesn't listen to me at all. Okay. I can't, I can't hear half of what you guys are saying because uh, the video is playing in the background. Sure, absolutely. Is there any evidence of this campaign for Austin existing? Uh, not anymore. It's been, it's been two years almost since it happened. But, so uh, it's been that long ago, and I have no – I've deleted all the stuff. The only reason that Pinterest page wasn't deleted, like you guys have said, is because I don't have the password to delete it anymore. Hmm. It's been two years since this was done, and I have no way to get in there and close that account out. Otherwise, it would have been gone a year ago. Fair enough. If you were, um, if you were, to, talk to, if you were to talk to my parole officer, Matt Matthews, my former parole officer, he would tell you that I had no incidents in the four years that I was on parole after I got out of prison. And I've had no issues through today. I keep in contact with my parole officer at least once a month just to let him know that I'm doing good. Sure. I mean, you have somebody here saying that a convicted offender looking up children in compromising positions. I, I mean, and, uh, I, went back and, I went back and looked at that Pinterest page yesterday. I pulled it up and looked at it. And the only scantily clad ones I saw were 19, 20 year olds, and those are legal age, so there's nothing illegal about that at all. Um, so, yeah, and Scarlett said that you were married at one point, is that true? Yeah, we were married for two years. She divorced me because I couldn't give her any kids. I'm, I can't have kids anymore. because that wasn't the only that wasn't the only site that we used for getting pictures. That was just where some of the better pictures were for what we wanted to use for higher quality pictures. But there's not like a single picture of a, of a girl dressed as a man here like austin i have had no problems with that i went through offender treatment i i went through it for four years completed it with with the highest grades i could get in the, in it oh, for doing homework and everything else that we had to do and apply applying uh techniques that they give us that they teach us to uh no longer reoffend. First, like first off my name is not rupal it's angus yeah, I had my name legally changed five years ago. You said your name is Anus? No, I said Angus. No, oh, don't it's even go there Angus, right now. like the beef, like the beef. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. uh, you're looking at kids, like young kids who are dressed up as women. I mean, it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's still there, man. It's definitely there. You can read all the books you want. You can, you can try and brainwash it. Tell the parole board what they want to hear. But, I mean, come on, man. Let's be real with each other. Now, why would he want to change his name? That's quite weird. That's interesting. If you've ever seen the movie Inglorious Bastards, you might understand why I think it might be necessary to mark people like this with a permanent, I don't know, cut, branding, something on their body that distinguishes them so that the public can see the monsters that they truly are. You can run away, you can change your name to be named after a cow, but your crime should be able to follow you. He's running away from it because he understands that what he did makes him unlikable, unhirable, and a monster. Yet, he's still able to get away with it. And it's quite clear that this man is not reformed. Anybody that would be reformed would not be going on Pinterest and saving pictures of little kids to look at in their spare time. That's weird. But trust me, this isn't the last time that Rupal will have a fascination with becoming and going into a woman's skin. Rupal continued his fascination with transgenderism well past this interview. Most recently, it was discovered that Rupal had transitioned into a woman. You can forget about your friends. You can forget about your family. <laughs> because Kurt is now both your mother and your father. Kurt must look awfully strange, naked. It is speculated that a troll had sent this photo to Cyrax, 
pretending to be an interested female companion, to which Chance proceeded to jerk off to this photo without the knowledge that this was in fact his biological father. Rupal's transition is contentious to say the least, and still has not been 100% verified. Following the arrest of Chance's father, the state of Alaska deemed his mother incapable of raising him on her own and instead gave custody to his grandmother, Sally. Sally lived in Akron, Ohio, and upon arrival changed Cyrix's name to Chance Wilkins. They have been documented as being very cordial with one another and have definitely never gotten into any physical altercations. What's up, guys? Um, yeah. 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 Hold on, guys. Do what? No, I don't hear. What? Yeah, it's not the flash. Well, that's just too flippin' bad. Hey, you okay? Yeah. He wasn't listening to me and did it all by himself. Ah, you broke the door. No, I didn't. Well, you did. Where? Oh my God, I'll catch you guys in a bit. It has been noted that Chance lived in Florida around this time, but ultimately returned home to Ohio, where he continues to live today. A lot of Chance's adolescent life has been mostly undocumented, and we don't know a lot about his upbringing until he started high school. There are three major events that we have documented throughout his time in high school. His initial musical inspiration, him falling from a two-story building, and the Blind Billy saga. Cyrus claims to have been in a band during high school, and says that this has inspired him to become a DJ, and ultimately, a sound engineer. Even though his music sounds like crap and his videos are never mixed correctly. A troll by the name of Death by Design interviewed Chance's estranged aunt, who gave a lot of interesting information about the Wilkins household, which will be researched in a later edition of this series. These revelations include abuse, neglect, and delusions. Yet, Chance only decided to respond to the accusation that he was never really in a band in high school. And if I was never in a band, then why can I do shit like this? <laughs> or... Yeah! Dumb bitch. Try again. Chance never excelled at social interactions or academics while in high school. He continues to read at a third grade level and rarely leaves his attic lair inside of his grandmother's home on Lloyd Street. While not much is known about the incident, it appears that Cyrix tried to impress a group of peers at his high school by trying to do a parkour trick scaling down a two-story building. This attempt went about as well as you might have expected. He fell and busted his head open. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. It was lunchtime, and these kids dared him that he couldn't do jump something on the, from the balcony. The backflip. Okay? The backflip. Okay, so Dylan gets up on the rail of okay, the balcony. Okay, yeah, and he, and he smacked his head. Okay, he smacked his head. on the concrete. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I had a question about this. All right. Do you think, okay, 
after certain hin- after certain head injuries, like people f- have dramatic personality changes at times. Do you feel like after the f- head injury, like what like, head injury? He didn't hit his head. He smacked his head off a. Of, he's he was like on the second the second floor when he did the back flip. It was like off the second he floor. But he he didn't he didn't hit his head. He landed on his side and broke his arm. Chance I see. I I wish I could pull videos up during this conversation because. I'll go and show you the video where Chance says, yeah, I, I, I was doing a backflip and I hit my head and, and I was out hit. for a... My kids were in school with him. He did not hit his head. Wait, his grown ass was in school with your kids? <laughs> no, look, you don't realize Chance is the same age as one of my daughters. Literally, he's, he's like six months older than her. Oh. In a just world, this might have knocked some sense into chance, but it appears that this might have been the beginning of his decline. This desire to impress others might have even influenced him to commit more nefarious crimes, like illegally accessing a rail yard and interacting with its train cars, which, in case you didn't know, is a felony in Ohio. (laughs) No charges have ever, or will ever, be assessed to chance because of this incident. But it's important to note just how much of a hardened criminal we are dealing with. In the beginning of 2012, Cyrex assaulted Sally and was promptly arrested. What could have caused this? Well, Cyrex was being catfished by somebody supposedly in Kansas and wanted to move out there to be with them. Mind you, Cyrex did not have a job, did not have money, and had no feasible way of getting to Kansas apart from on foot. Sally stepped in and told Chance that he could not leave, to which the police report states, She and the suspect were arguing because he wanted to take his belongings and move to Kansas. Victim states he has nothing lined up or planned for a move to Kansas, and told him he could not take his things from the house. Victim states the argument quickly turned physical when the suspect began to choke her, grab her arms, and punch her in the back of the head. Suspect fled on foot and was apprehended without incident. Chance was such a coward that he ambushed Sally and struck her in the back of the head before fleeing. Sally, although elderly, was able to free herself from Chance's hold and call the police. She did not, however, press charges, but tried to send him to a group home, but he only temporarily stayed in a hotel before returning home. There have been other altercations between the two that will be documented at a later date, but this proves that no one caught up in the web of Cyrax is safe, not even the blind. The Blind Billy Saga is one of Chance's most infamous and sinister acts that has ever been documented in the Cyrax verse. The story took place in 2012 when as a senior and at the age of 22, Cyrex allegedly assaulted a kid in his class, who was legally blind, while at a sleepover. The incident is is described as a non-consensual intercourse between the two, where Cyrex engaged physically and orally on Billy's genitals, without permission and without much initiation. As I said, my entire life, I was bullied, I was picked on, I was beat up, I was degraded, I was I'd just like to put out a warning for some adult content and conversations that are going to be going on. If you're faint of heart, might not be the best content to witness. Even though Cyrix is extremely regarded and can't control himself in the whole situation, is kind of made a mockery by himself and Marty. I do want to put that out there. I'll also be jumping in between here and there to give some thoughts, some opinions, some further explanations about things, because this is a very long series that went on between Cyrax, Blind Billy, different panels, a lot of clips, so it's going to be long. I'll put some timestamps in there if you want to jump around. Either way, let's get into it. Unfortunately, um, when I was about 16, 17 years old, God, I can't wait. I'm about to talk about this. And this is crazy, but I do no, feel so like. Damaging. Just yeah, yeah. I'm like, with you. Don't forget that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
it's just like it's one of those things that like like you, you don't really want to face but you kind of have to in a sense so like this is a good thing here so it you know like thing, unfortunately, yeah. yeah like unfortunately when i was 16 to 17 years old around that time period um i was actually raised by one of my best friends from high school you know that weird kid in high school that's just like really strange and like an oddball kind of person we were hanging out or whatever and like during that time like he just kind of like put his arm around me kind of like what jake does to me all the time like he kind of gave me a hug like that and like during that time like the way he did it made me suspect that he was but i wasn't entirely sure so i was like okay whatever but no man it is what it is but uh there was a day where um we had had some like city people um working on our street and i guess one of them had to cut the power to my street and the way our streets were was like we lived on like a street that was like this so like this whole block was one street and then down this way was another so when our power went out keep in mind i did not know that uh billy had lived on the same street until he had walked down the street and he was like yo like is your guys's power out because, like, we noticed people over here working or whatever. And we are like, yeah, but, like, it came back. Like, we're good. You know, whatever. And then, like, later that night, they started working again. So, my mom had to work that night. So, she was like, hey, why don't you just go ahead and, you know, walk over there to Billy's house with them. And I was like, all right, cool. No problem. You know, I'll go over there, stay the night over there. It's quite odd how gleeful Cyrex is in this opening clip. We're going to see a lot of nuances that he displays in his version of the story that sort of reminisce back to what he does today. A lot of projecting and a lot of substituting events that he actually partakes in and sort of spin zones them on you. He's so giddy and it really takes you back for a second because he's going to try and say that he is becoming empowered by this, he's accepting what happened to him, but in my mind, I view it more in the sense of he's going to garner sympathy from people, and that's what he always wants. He wants to feel like people have some sort of emotion towards him, have some sort of feelings towards him, and that he is the ultimate victim. But that victim complex is not going to survive very long in this situation. Well, me and him were over there. We did the typical things that you would normally do. Like, we would sit there, play video games, listen to music, annoy the shit out of his older sister. <laughs> like, you know, the typical stuff. You know, very typical teenager-esque stuff. And yes, for all y'all wondering if I was a rebel as a teenager, you bet your damn ass I was a rebel. I was the worst, let's be honest. I was the worst rebel that's my mom she'll tell you how was bad <laughs> um we started passing out i was like the literally the first fall asleep i was halfway asleep i was like oh i'm so tired like you know how like when you're like in that in between area of like being asleep and awake like you're like right in between it was like that. Like, I was literally like, Ugh. And, like, next thing I know, I feel stoned behind me. And I'm, like, looking around thinking, like, oh, it's probably just a dog because he had a dog that would, you know, come in the room and hang out or whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever. His dog's there. Whatever. Cool. Fine. Let him pass out. I don't give two shits. Chan, can I just ask, did you mention is disability i can't remember at the beginning oh yeah um that is something that i did forget to mention that he was half blind but they they legally labeled him as blind for 
whatever reason. I don't know why they did full blind instead of half. He was he was literally like about to be the same age as me. I was seventeen at the time. He was sixteen. Yeah. He was getting ready to be seventeen, and I was just getting ready to be eighteen that year. So yeah. like it was like right in between. And unfortunately, like I felt my pants get ripped down and from there everything happened and before i knew what happened i didn't see him on top of me so as soon as i seen that i literally reached my elbow around and i like got him like right here on the jaw because he was up high enough to where i could you know get him so i around i'm like yo get the off me dude and he was literally sitting there like what the fuck? like you know like he took me as being gay when i clearly wasn't and i had told him this and i guess he was trying to you know force that on me by doing what he did unfortunately and next day uh, we went to school after i had packed my shit up and i went back home i had let my mom know did you actually penetrate? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. But he wasn't in there long enough to really be able to do anything. Right. So, okay. so thankfully, it didn't go too far. But it was it was just enough to be like, yo, like you're about to get knocked out. So there are some key notes that are worth keeping in the back of your mind as we go through and more information is provided. First off, an important note is that Cyrus keeps saying that him and Blind Billy were around the same age. I don't believe that's true. We know for a fact that Cyrus was removed from school towards the end of being 22 and then eventually did not graduate high school because he exceeded the maximum age, which was 23. So that would imply he was a senior around 22 years of age. Now it's possible that he was a senior for like five, six years, who knows? We don't know the intricacies of it, but it seems like this story took place in 2012. In 2012, Cyrax would have been 21, 22 years old. Blind Billy, on the other hand, Cyrus explains that he was about a year younger than him, in theory. So he would have been about 16 or 17 years old. So the likelihood is that this situation took place with a 17 year old and a 21, 22 year old. Grotesque and illegal, to say the least. Secondly, it's important to also keep in mind that he says that he went home after this event. This is contradictory with what Blind Billy says. He went home and did not tell his parents what had occurred. And lastly, I think it's worth noting and questioning how quickly this event actually transpired. Cyrix claims that he was laying down on his stomach and... Blind Belly in one fell swoop took off his pants, his underwear, and got got to business. So, the likelihood of that with no retaliation is very low. There's a chance that Cyrex might have been on medications around this time. We don't know when that started. But, it seems pretty fishy and pretty phony, to say the least. And I get a call down to the principal's office later that day. And, I was like, oh. Okay, like I didn't know if I was in trouble or what because that week before I actually did get into a fight with some idiot that wanted to start shit. So I didn't know if it was about that or if it was about something else. I didn't know. So I went down there to talk to the principal and he had brought up the fact that Billy had told him what happened. And I looked at him. I'm like okay he told you what happened and he apparently turned around and this does happen to a lot of people mind you as sad as it is uh billy had turned the story around and said that i had done it to him they had to expel me because he was underage at the time and the principal was like look you know i kind of figured like this wasn't you because like he had talked to billy and billy's parents and family and he had the principal had them take him home and when i sat down and i talked to the principal by myself 
with my family present. Um, he had said, you know, like, look, I know you're not a bad student. I know you wouldn't do anything like this. But unfortunately, due to the age that he is and you being the older one, you know, I'm going to have to expel you to keep this from, you know, happening again. And I was just like, I was in shock. I'm like, really? So you're just going to let him, like, go like that? Like, why isn't he getting expelled? Why am I to be the one to get expelled? Like, he did this to me. It wasn't the other way around like he's saying. Like, that's not fair. And he was like, I know it's not, but due to protocol and, you know, the rules that they have to abide by, because of the age, he was still a minor. And I was like, I think like six months away from being 18 at that point. And due to that, they were like, you know, we could have you arrested, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to, you know, expel you and put you in another school for you know, your safety, and we also know that you're angry, and we don't want you going off on another student and hurting anybody, so unfortunately, they did have to transfer me to another school. So yes, Cyrex is giving a very regarded explanation as to why he was expelled. It doesn't make any sense why the victim would be kicked out of school. What is more than likely is the principal heard the case, understood that there's probably a lot of effort and work that would go into trying to get physical evidence to expel Chance from, and basically told him, hey, you're an adult, you're over age, we're going to kick you out of school, and if you can test it, we're going to take it to the police, and if not, well, you can just scurry away on your merry way. Now, at the same time, I think it's kind of important to give at least a brief overview of Akron, to get a better understanding of what was going on, what school he was at. So basically you can see up here, Cyrix says he went to North High School, which is north of Akron in the North Hill, Chapel Hill area. And you can see below there's Summit Lake. And then you can see Kenmore High School. That is where he alleges he was sent to afterwards. And in turn, when he moved down here, Here's where Lloyd Street is. That is when they moved to the house that they're at now. That's the rough approximation. It, it, it sort of lines up because we believe that he's been in the Lloyd Street house for about 10 years now, a little bit more. So this being kicked out of school gives you a good idea. And it also just sort of exacerbates the idea that somebody like Chance can commit a heinous crime like this have real no real investigation involved and just get to go to another school for six months before he's ultimately done with his high school career well so they were victim blaming as well not really they weren't victim blaming but due to the whole age gap thing they kind of had to be like you know you are the older one you know, you should have known. And I explained to them, I was like, look, I didn't know. I had no idea he was gay. I did not know this. I didn't even know that any of this was going to happen. I Why did. did I did. Okay. And thankfully, I didn't have anything. Thank God for that. I did get checked. And thankfully, you know, I didn't have anything. Thank God. But I think you the know, police would find them. I honestly don't know. I really don't know. But, like, for me, like, I'm not even, like, really, you know, worried about tracking them down at this point. And the reason being, and I know this is going to sound, you know, kind of weird, but this is just, you know, how I'm looking at it. And I know this is kind of a screwed up way to look at it, but I feel like, you know, me going through that in a sense um, I feel like, to me, it was like, I kind of feel like, in a sense, it was a good thing to go through that experience, as as gross and as it is, because I'm now able to, you know, reach out to, you know, people that go through that stuff, and I can sit there and say, hey, you know, I've actually gone through this.
that genuinely understand and you're not alone in that fight and how did how did sally take it how did your mum take it oh she was pissed like she was in disbelief that like he would even do something like that like she was just like what the hell like he seemed like such a good kid because he would always come over he would always hang out you know we would always play video games like hell there were times where he would stay the weekend. You have another little inconsistency here with Chance's story because he claims he didn't know that Blind Billy lived on the same street as him, but in turn, they hung out a lot and they play video games at each other's houses all the time, which is pretty weird. Unless he was knocked out and then transported between houses, I don't know how you'd have no clue, or he's just horrible at directions. I think it's also an interesting mindset to sort of listen to him explain his story and instead of it being he interpreted it as Cyrax talking in the third person so when Sally was pissed off at him because he's such a nice and kind boy interpret it as Cyrax is projecting this and it sort of reminds me of stories where somebody might stay in their hometown and when everybody else moved away they say oh i was the king of the varsity team i was the greatest athlete of all time but then whenever somebody comes back home during christmas vacation or something they blow that whole story to pieces and the guy looks like a dunce on his own side that's how i feel like cyrix is explaining this he's not being authentic well, here's the thing, Marty, and this is what then a lot of people do get confused on this, too. The reason why they expelled me and not him was because of the fact that during the time that it happened, he was 16. I was 17, getting ready to be 18 in about six months. And why didn't Sally the- call the cops, though, too? Like, that's another thing oh, that bothers me is about the school. That, that, like, yeah, that, that should be irrelevant. Cyrex age is irrelevant to aggression. Yeah. Cyrex said that he was almost sent to juvenile hall for this. I actually was because the security people there had looked at me. They looked at my age. And they were seriously thinking about sending me to juvenile hall. But because of the fact that I was underage and the fact that they knew that I would never like really do anything like that and that I'm not like that, they are like, you know what? Since we know you're not actually like this, and we know you wouldn't do anything like this, I was like, okay, like I didn't know if I was in trouble or what. Because that week before I actually did get into a fight with some idiot that wanted to start shit, so I didn't know if it was about that to protect you from this happening. Sorry, did not believe you because he was disabled and partially blind? Was it the fact that they didn't believe your, your claims or whatever? I think, I think so. That may have had something to do with it. I'm not entirely sure like, as far as their end goes. But I do know for a fact that um, when the initial stuff got brought to them, they were thinking about arresting me. But one of the... um and Why you, so- dude? Why you? You're the victim. I don't understand why are you going to get arrested? Well, because in the eyes of the law, they didn't consider him the victim. That's uh, evident. And, Sarex, you said that he was, you were lying face down on the ground, and he somehow pulled down your pants and underpants and penetrated you in one act. Wait, hold on. Before, right. before, before you talk, all right, Mark, before you talk, Cyrax, is there any chance that this kid, like, did y'all have a little bit of a relationship? Did you have something, like, between the two of y'all? I mean, see, I always saw him as one of my best friends, but I guess he didn't see me like that. He saw me as more than that. Do I? Did you present the note to the school? Oh, yeah, I did. But to them, that was irrelevant. To them, that didn't matter. What had mattered was what had gone on. That's what had mattered at that point in time. They didn't give a fuck about the note. They wouldn't give a fuck about, yo, like, you did this, so this is what's going to happen. Like, that's the kind of school that they are. Oh, I did. I went home. Like, as soon as everything happened, I went Sorry, straight to You said home. you slept over there the last time, though. Marty, why do you got to make shit complicated, bro? For real? It's a, an important detail. 
no, again, it, again, that's why Cyrus, I'm, I'm asking the question too. Like, was there anything right. consensual about it? Was there anything that, you know, y'all were playing around, playing a little bit of grab ass after hours and shit got weird? Because <laughs> that no like, no, like, for real. Like, I was seriously half asleep. Do what? When was the first time Sally heard about this? When the school had called her and told her about what happened. So when did she your conversation? No when did your conversation like just let it go happen? That was literally like right when I got home. Like okay. literally the minute I walked in the door, my mom was like, "What are you doing home? I thought you were staying over at his house for a night." I was like, "Yeah, well, that's not happening now." And she was like what happened like and you what, didn't tell her did you tell her no. then when you got back home did you tell no, her no I, no I, I was i was an idiot teenager at the time i was like i i made up a lie saying hey you know their power went out whatever you know i'm going to bed like i tried to hide it i was like i thought you went over there because the power went out though. yeah i you did know? and on our end it did go out and so Cyrex is getting eaten alive in these live feeds with other people, and the biggest culprit is Music Biz Marty. I will get into Marty more later in a more in-depth video down the line, but obviously if you watch any Cyrex content, you know he's the greatest agitator. He's there to try and make Cyrex freak out, and in this instance, he's trying to really expose him for the hypocrisy and the two-speak that he's, he's going through. We caught him in one talking about how he was always such a good student, yet he had previously told in the other story that he had gotten in a fight previously. So it's obvious the administration was aware of him. They knew that he wasn't a good student. They knew he got in the fights, yet Chance is trying to come off as this holy angel. And we're going to see Marty opens up a Pandora's box of information because he actually gets Blind Billy to come in and do an interview with him. Like, you think that just because you contacted Billy and got in contact with him, you think that that makes your case better, but it doesn't. You need to let it go. Like, for real, you, you do you really think he's going to admit to what he did? No. Do you really think that's going to fucking work? Not a chance. Oh, I know I don't. I just find it funny that Marty's trying to sit here and say I did something I didn't do when my name's been cleared for, what, 10, 13 years now? Something like that? Like about 13 years? Yeah, about, yeah, about 13 years my name's been cleared. So Cyrix is in full damage control before the interview even happens. He posts this on his YouTube channel, basically pleading with Marty saying, Hey, nothing's going to come from this. Why would he admit to it? Well, Cyrix, why are you so afraid? Why do you want to prevent Billy from speaking? Okay, so I have to make a bit of a joke with this one. Sure. If I had done anything like that, he could have easily pushed me out because I only weighed about 100 pounds, if not 90. So there was if, – if that had ever happened, he could have easily just pushed me off. There, so there's no way in hell, even with the limited vision that I have, sure. that I would have done that kind of stuff. I'm not that type of person. Yeah, I've always said it was like a dark room you know, with your visual impairment. Either on my belly on the floor – or I think I was searching for something, and the next thing I already know is I'm in a position, and basically uh, my my pants and underwear come off, or at least down to the ankles, and he basically gets behind me and just starts rubbing himself himself on my ass basically no penetration but i want to say it was probably just a way to get himself who the hell knows sure. um and then he flipped me onto my back or at least moved me onto my back and ended up sucking and jerking me off until i ended up and 
uh, he seemed to have enjoyed that because when I was about ready to, he had said something along the lines of, oh yeah, I can hear it. And so afterwards, like what happened? What did, what did he do? So after that, I think we just kind of, uh, you know, we just ended up going to sleep till the next day. Um, you know, I was, once everything kind of processed in my brain, you know, I just, I wanted to act like everything was okay. And so with it being a school day and everything, he ended up, you know, my mom ended up driving us to school, you know, with both of our stuff. And I ended up, you know, just trying to go through a normal day of school. But unfortunately, with the events of that previous night that happened, I only made it through maybe a little bit of the day. And I was like, I can't this it's like i need to tell someone about this can i ask you what what the letter said like were you trying were you did did you tell them who it was did you tell them like how graphic did did you was the letter no. or did they kind of dig it out of you they didn't dig it out of me at all actually i wrote everything down it was probably maybe i want to say maybe a page or two long and it was just me basically explaining what had happened the night before. Um, you know, even if stuff didn't happen in school, it's still just, you know, it's a good idea to at least let, you know, the school know that, hey, you know, sure. this this thing happened and, you know, maybe keep an eye on this person in case they decide to do something else. Yeah. Um, he said that he was proven innocent, but mm. yeah, I agreed innocent boy it sounds to me like this truth it sounds to me like his truth has some holes in it that need to be patched up yeah but that's he, why i'm here he was suspended yes he was suspended um for a couple days and you know he wanted i could see him in the halls and everything and he wanted to try to make up you know just try to be friends and I can't remember exactly what I said to him. I said to him something, but I just ended up, you know, I said something and I walked away from him. Like, you know, it's, it's he's crazy. He's trying to call you a murderer when his ass is basically going around saying he was in the military. Wait, is he what? Yes. His Facebook profile says he was in the military. <laughs> and I wish I was kidding about that, but you want to pull that kind of shit? I tell you what, that's not a good idea because I know people in the army. I know people who have been through shit and have seen shit. So if you want to say that you've been in the army, I tell you what, you sure as hell don't want to be my friends. Well, now you can understand why Cyrax didn't want this interview to happen. The main reason being, Cyrax explained the story well, he just reversed the roles. Blind Billy was the one taking advantage of, and Cyrax was the one taking advantage of him. So it's no surprise that he tried to get this interview off the internet, try and prevent it. But don't worry, he has a trick up his sleeve. He's going to join the call and he's going to give his very uh, unopinionated, very astute observations of the entire situation. I mean, he's calling you the F word while your dick was in his mouth. I mean, yeah, but you know... There you go, Sir X. There you come go. Come on, come on, Billy. Why don't you tell them the yeah. truth? Tell them the truth about how it was acquitted and how it got let go. You <laughs> you know, you hey, I Billy, know. tell them the truth. You acquitted. So, <laughs> did this ever become criminal? Schools removed me for my own safety so I wouldn't beat your goddamn oh, ass man. after what oh, you man. did to me, you bitch. I kid you not, this is one of the few instances in this entire about 10 minute long interview with Cyrax where I could actually chop up and make something legible of what he was saying. He did his typical instance of speaking over, yelling over everybody and just swearing the entire time, not really getting anything across, but it certainly doesn't look like he is a very trustworthy source now. It seems like he's hiding something. But don't worry, he's going to come back later tonight and he's going to give us one last performance to really soothe us, really put our nerves at ease. Long time, guys. Now, some of you might hate me for something I didn't do. 
Cause your boy is back. Now this first song. We have no official documents that explain why Cyrax was removed from school. Although, his side of the story is that the school took him out to protect him from Billy, even though that obviously makes no sense and lacks any credibility. It's more than likely a combination of this event and Chance passing the maximum age allowed at the school. Cyrax has no documentation of graduating from high school or ever receiving his GED. Chance has gone by a litany of different channel names and aliases since his first foray onto the internet in 2012. Initially, he started a YouTube channel under the moniker DJ Shadowblade, where he posted mostly music and variety content. This included a video dedicated towards Operation Smiles, a program to bring awareness and funding to children with cleft lips. bizarre because it showed images of disfigured children with hardcore death metal music in the background. If this was made by anyone other than Chance, I might be able to muster a giggle for the absurdity, but knowing that he actually thought this was a good idea just adds a, a cherry on top to the cake. Following Sally allowing Chance to move back home, he made an account under his own name where he uploaded our oldest documented original song and music video. It's So Delicious Demo DJ Shadow Blade featuring The Possessed One. The smell of it is so potent, but it's just so delicious. Party, 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 party. The smell of it is 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 so potent, but it's just so delicious. Around this time is when Chance started to associate with a musician named Eric Scrubbolo. Scrubbolo was involved in signed to a record label, Killer Clown Sounds, which was a label managed by the Juggalos. In an interview with Marty, Eric claims to have signed Cyrax because he felt bad for him and wanted to extend a helping hand. Yeah. How are you doing today, sir? I'm um, doing excellent. How about yourself? Lovely, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're wondering where my intrigue is coming from. Um, let me let me ask you this: uh, out of all of your label mates, what experience do you remember the most? Like, which one do you remember dealing with more than the others? Okay, what is this for? Uh, purely intrigue in the one they call Shadow Blade. <laughs> um, listen, man, with the one they call Shadow Blade, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't want to know my opinion on him. Oh, believe you me, uh, I hold them in very, very low standing. The lowest of standings. Yeah, well, um... I can't find him. Okay, I can't find what profile he's in. Oh my I... god, well, well, Mr. Scrublaw, I've got great news for you. Uh, I have had very extensive dealings with him. Uh, he's threatened to murder me endless times. Like, I have had a real back and forth with this little guy. Uh... I'd be more than happy to relay it to you. Okay. Um, well, number one, he is an ex-label mate. 
Yeah. He, uh, I don't know, man. He stole like ten of my songs. Jesus Christ! He yeah, he just steals everything, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, last time I talked to him, we recorded, and then that name, number got, or that name got, you know. Yeah. The sure. I've known him for close to maybe 10 years. Holy shit. Um, I've only known him for about a year and a half. And uh, and to be honest with you, in the beginning, I felt bad for the guy. And, you know, I had a little clout. And he was trying to be a DJ. And I'm like, okay, man, well, I mean, I kind of feel bad for you. Of course, you've got some problems. And... Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I mean, I find it rather remarkable that somebody with his conditions can evoke such hatred, you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't. That's what I don't understand. And it's not towards just, you know, a stranger. Mm -hmm. The hatred is toward the people that try to help him. If you listen to my songs, you hear me shout out to Blade. Yeah. Chance had gone by many different rap aliases such as Virus, Cyrax, DK Customs, and DJ Otaku, before he ultimately stole the name Cyrax from another member of the label, while denying this fact. Yeah, he goes by Cyrax now. Yeah, that was the one for me. He's... Wow, so you started going by Cyrax and then he just stole the Cyrax name from you? I was going to release an album called The Cyrex Complex. Holy shit. Um, he used to go by Virus, which was also stolen from me. Cyrex has never had an authentic name in his life. Sally renamed him upon moving away from Alaska, and Chance stole the name he was most known by until recent months. Joining the Juggalo lifestyle proved to be too difficult for our boy because only a couple months into signing to this label, Chance will release a two-part video, Inside the Shadow, that involved him discussing his music and showing his living situation. Hello, this is your boy DJ Shadowblade here with the Shadowblade Productions behind the scenes and behind my music. This is actually the first episode, so kind of come hit break, please. But anyways, um, there's another thing that I want to touch base on that has I've noticed going around Facebook and around YouTube a lot, and that is these new supposed rules on being a juggler. It really does disappoint me because I've been in the family for a little over seven years close to 10 but um these new rules are you supposedly have to be jumped in and all this other crap and I'm here to say you know that's not true you don't have to be jumped in cause we're not a gang we're a family yeah we paint up our faces but you know there's something that a lot of people don't know about us and that's the fact that you know yeah we do paint up our faces and we have these huge huge gatherings and these little get togethers and carnivals and concerts and stuff and honestly a lot of us are just normal everyday people who enjoy the same kind of music like me like it, comment on it, and on a side note, I'm also going to be posting the official website links to both my personal music website, where I put all my stuff out, as well as the Killer Clown Sounds website, and a website that I made just for the family. It's where like all the jugglers and jugglets can come in hang out, have fun, relax, and sign up, register to these websites, and just go in and have fun and stuff. In this part, I am going to show you 
where all the magic happens. Here we got some wood stairs. This place is fairly old. But man, it's all good. Got my little punching bag right here that I like to work out on and keep in shape with. I love messing with that. Over here you got my shelf full of different stuff like you can't really see it. I got number three, Dale Earnhardt collectible car. I'm a bit of a NASCAR fan. And then you got my trophy. I won in Cub Scouts when I was a little kid. And then a picture of me and one of my friends. And stuff and that right there is like my bookshelf. You got a little rolling machine that I like to work out on. And stuff, you know, just to keep myself in shape. Along with some weights right down here. But my bike, I do a lot of bike riding and BMX. And then, of course, I got my skateboard right there. You can't really see it, but it's a Swift Justice Mongoose. It's pretty badass, actually. I do a lot of skateboarding and stuff in my spare time. Got an empty CD case here that's got... I got my Godsmack Oracle CD and the computer here, but this is where it all happens. This is my old HP Compact Presario processor computer. It's pretty old. It's very slow, but you know, it works for now until I can at least upgrade and stuff. This is the tower and stuff and whatnot, of course. And then you got a Three Wise Monkeys lamp that I got one year. It's the Hear No Evil, Speak No Evil, See No Evil lamp. I got a thing of sunflower seeds here that I like to munch on whenever I get the munchies. Because, you know, you got to stay, you can't go hungry if you're working on music. So whenever I get the munchies. Or I just get hungry for like a snack, I munch on those. But, uh, yeah, and then over here you got like our laundry room area right here. You got a couple washers and dryers. You got our heating boiler for our hot water and shit. But, uh, that's it for this studio. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes tour. He followed this up by announcing his departure from the Juggalo lifestyle with his blank faced girlfriend, Heather, by his side. If you ever wanted proof that you too can find love, just look at Chance of Success while being an unmitigated disaster his entire life. Arguably Cyrex's most notable moment, pre lolcal stardom, occurred around this time. The Chester Bennington Scream. If there's one thing you should know about Cyrax, it's that he loves Linkin Park, probably more than anything else. Chester Bennington, the lead singer of the band, was an idol that Chance constantly looked up to. Unfortunately for Chance and fans of mid-2000s rock, Chester passed away in 2017, to which Cyrax decided to make an in-memoriam concert for him. It went about as well as you'd expect. Because this cover show isn't just about celebrating the life of one of the greatest artists and vocalists on the face of this earth. Now, with that being said, 
Are you guys ready to have some fun, man? Who's ready? You guys ready to have some fun? Now, like I said, these songs may not be perfect, dead spot on. You can't end up to what you can't. Everybody the fits they hold inside. Fits with it, don't close my eyes. Fits the watch every time they watch. Fits the last every time they fall. Till now it's time to sink or swim. But the fits side is watching you too. Right inside your skin. They got Upon Cyrex exiting the Juggalo lifestyle, a rift began to form between Chance and the other label signing mates, in particular Eric. This turmoil boiled over to the point that Cyrex took the dog tags gifted to him from Eric and threw them into Summit Lake, which is right next door to his house. Listen, I know you're pretty upset about the whole dog tag thing and whatnot. Well, when we did the whole thing with the dog tags, it's because we were pissed off. We didn't know what the hell to do. We were, yeah. we were seriously just, we were only doing like my mom wanted us to do. She came up with the idea to throw them into the lake and at the time it seemed like a good idea. And honestly, we regret it, man. We, yeah, big time. We seriously regret doing that, man. You're family, dude. And it's because of KKS that we made it as far as we did. Yep. And we thank you. Yeah, seriously, man. Because without you, I don't know what we'd be doing. And we love you to death. Exactly, man. So if you see this, man, just know that we are deeply and truly sorry. If you're still upset, we understand, because honestly, we'd be upset with that kind of stuff too. Yep. Yeah. So, I guess we'll talk to you later on, bro, right? Deuces, bro. Deuces. He realized almost immediately that he messed up and made a video with Blank Eyed McGee to apologize to Eric. Unfortunately for Chance, the relationship was beyond repair and he was ultimately removed from a label for the first time. In the coming months, Chance did a couple odds and ends on the internet, like lying about starting up a video game based off popular game franchises such as Resident Evil, Call of Duty, and Halo. As expected, no proof of this game ever showed up, and the project was slowly forgotten. In a now lost video, Cyrex pleaded with then President Barack Obama to give a more lenient stance on gun laws and stand your ground protections for people with mental disorders. On YouTube. Today, I want to talk about a certain topic. Man. No tolerance law. In some cases, I can agree with it, in others, I can't. The one I want most to talk about is self defense. A bomb. Why find the no tolerance law? You need to take it out. If somebody's fighting you and you can't get away from that person, you can't help but defend yourself. You have a right to defend yourself. Change the law. Change where it stands. Which one? I'm fine. And being arrested for defending yourself? You can't always get to the same place. Sometimes you're going to have to fight back. You need to change this a lot. You really do. There's a lot of kids like myself who were going into school, into our high school. And you cannot tell me that you weren't one of those kids that had it rough. What I'll get is how you can sit there and arrest somebody who is clearly defending themselves against an attacker. Like, if I'm trapped in a corner, like a literal corner, and I'm getting attacked, my first instinct, automatically, my reaction is to fight back and defend myself. So I don't get where you're getting off with all this crap. Of, oh, there should be no fighting allowed and whatever. And I can agree with that. There really shouldn't be. But when it comes to defending yourself, everybody has a right to defend themselves. Everyone. Me, you, the people watching this video right now, you all have a right to defend yourself. It's how we made a change. And that change needs to come now. 
You know, like, for those of you who aren't getting beat up, bullied, and who are fighting back and getting in trouble for it, you're not a bunch. I'm here to help. We're going to change this ball, and we're going to do it together. You see this right here, this fist? This is not a fist of violence. I do not promote violence. I promote self-defense. The right to defend. If somebody's being attacked for no reason and they cannot defend themselves, I will stand up and defend. You all have a right to fight back against bullies. Sometimes when the attacker attacks you, you can't always get away. Sometimes you can't even get lucky and get away. But honestly, this law needs to change. We need to make a difference in this. So, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. For some reason, he had issues stuttering through the sentences and maybe displayed the first display of being sludged out by drugs slipped into his meals from Sally. This video would be the last video the internet would see from Chance for almost three years. With this hiatus comes the end of the first installment of the Cyrax Anthologies. I hope you all enjoyed this video and let me know if you'd like me to continue this series along with giving me some constructive criticism. I'm looking forward to where content like this takes me on my channel, and I hope you'll stick along as well. Thank you all so much, I very much appreciate you, and I love you. I'll see you guys next time, peace.